Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's great to be here sharing with you some of my own insights on the tarot, always from an archetypal perspective and bringing art history and my own work to tie it in with the different major arcana that we're discussing here. Today, we're gonna be embarking on a journey into the enchanted world of tarot once again, focusing this time on the Empress card. A captivating archetype that beckons us to explore the realms of creativity, abundance, and maternal energy. The card you see right in front of you here is my own version published by U.S. Games, the Tarot Neocolonial de las Américas. Meet the Empress, a figure exuding grace and fertility seated on her lush throne. From an archetypal perspective, the Empress embodies the essence of the divine feminine, a muse for the artist seeking inspiration from the very source of creation. In the language of art, the Empress is a masterpiece waiting to be fleshed out, depicted, portrayed through sculpture, painting, drawing. Her flowing gown, the intricate patterns on the throne, and the abundance of nature around her offer us a full spectrum of possibilities of artistic interpretation and manifestation. As creators, we resonate with her as a symbol of nurturing creativity and the fertile ground from which our ideas bloom. Imagine capturing the Empress, whether on canvas, on paper, on panel, blending earthly tones to represent the fertile soil beneath her, vibrant greens for the flourishing vegetation and soft hues that to evoke the nurturing energy that surrounds her. Each stroke of the brush brings us closer to channeling the essence of the Empress archetype into our work. She is also an inspiration. As artists, we are called to tap into our own wellspring of creativity, much like the Empress draws from the lush landscape around her. Through the art we create, we connect with the universal energies of growth, abundance, and the cyclical nature of life. The Holy Roman Empress, the Arch Duchess Maria Theresa of Austria, the only female ruler of the 650-year Habsburg dynasty and most humane, is the one that I used as an inspiration for my own version in the Tarot Neocolonial de las Américas. Now consider the card that we just talked about recently the popis or the high priestess these would be really the two sisters the empress and the popis the popis who is a virgin represents the spiritual femininity whereas the empress the mother rules over the mundane kingdom the popis was the uh, represented the lunar or moon watery realm the empress represents the motherly earthly realm whereas the Popis is in a closed position with arms. The Empress arms are open, indicating a more outgoing nature. She is also not confined by the pillars of the temple. The Popis, connected to Isis and gestation, is quite different from the Empress, who is connected to Ceres and vegetation. They are both different stages of time. The Popis, as the high priestess, and virgin serving the spirit, the empress as Madonna and ro royal queen fulfilling the spirit. The popis guards something old, the empress reveals something new. The popis is patience and passive waiting. The empress is action and completion. The popis holds the book of prophecy. The empress fulfills the prophecy. The book is no longer needed for the new king is born. The image of the Virgin Mary is that of the popis and the Empress joined into one. The image of the eagle and the shield represents the soul and the, and the life, but also it's a symbol of empire. Now, notice that her scepter, if you place the orb and the cross upside down, you get the astrological symbol of Venus, 
the queen of heaven. Being touched by Venus, this woman loves beauty in all its forms and shapes. Love is unifying, binding, and regenerating, connecting all opposites. What about her lounging royal aspect and her rich vestments, comfortable daughter of heaven and earth? Think about her posture, her grace, and her inner peace. She is above all things universal fecundity in the outer sense of the world. She is the fruitful mother of thousands. After all, she is the all-powerful mother of empire. Her voluptuous image speaks of comfort and sensuality. She is the embodiment of attraction and fertility, feminine energy grounded in the physical. In alchemy, she is the mother of the al alchemical child. She nurtures the three kingdoms in her womb, animal, vegetable, and mineral. The healing forces of nature, natural abundance, she draws from all of these forces. Now in numerology, you have that the number three is all about opposites and embracing the opposites. It's the synthesis and the harmony. Three is reflected in all trinities, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, past, present, future, mother, father, child. In all of these, the third member acts as an equilibrating factor. Three is the creature of nature, unburdened by ego or personality, experiencing the universe directly without controls or labels. Pythagoras considered it the first number, for one and two were merely essences with no geometric figures, hence no physical reality. Three creates a triangle, plain surface with beginning, middle, and end, just like a story. Carl Sagan once said that life on Earth might have begun with a lightning bolt striking the primordial sea. The magician, which represents fire, plus the popus, who represents water, equals the empress, Earth, life. There is a nice correspondence I've found between Campbell's hero's journey and the cards. The empress represents the calling and the refusal in those initial stages of the hero's journey. She is the mother world, the anima mundi, and the creative inspiration calling us to the adventure as we refuse, perhaps in the beginning, until we realize that there's a higher purpose to our own lives on this earth. In most decks, she is seated, suggesting passivity and rulership, inspiring us to the creative act. She moves others to action and self-realization. The key to her power is inspiration and love, and for that, she doesn't need to move a finger. A simple gaze will do. Action, plan, movement. In, in a matter, initiative, it is a one, two, three, go. Things are set in motion with this card. This is when everything starts to unfold at a cosmic scale. As a mother, archetype she is the giver and preserver of life all life is sacred to her motherhood and sex derive from feelings that are non-intellectual and basic to life passions rather than ideas the empress is pure emotion motherhood is the basic means by which life continues through nature mother love is the strongest form it is the pure feeling no judgment no moral or rational considerations the child is loved no matter what. Mother of love, mercy, shelter, and food. The need to nurture and to be nurtured is universal. But it's not all peaches and cream as we, we will see. The great mother is not always a good mother. On the grand scale of things, her negative devouring and smothering powers is also called the terrible mo mother as cruel mother earth seeks to repossess all life civilization to pull it back to her primordial womb the matriarchal can inspire love and devotion but also fear and intimidation with great power it can sustain but it can also take away empathy compassion and artistic sensibility 
are all within the realm. Experiencing life through the senses, something artificial intelligence will never have. Her embellished robe with flowers reminds us of, of a Botticelli painting. Saint Helen, Irene of Athens, Cleopatra, also the great goddesses Ishtar, Isis, and Aphrodite are all embodiments of the Empress. We find expressions of her in the great works of art of the Madonnas and Child. And take, for example, this work by Leonardo da Vinci. There's a great movie by Darren Aronofsky titled Mother with Jennifer Lawrence. It's painful but powerful to watch. I really recommend that, that film. And then you have the corporate media with magazines and these unrealistic beauty ideals. So add to that the additional layer of what we have today with the AI versus the artist. Sensory experience and imperfection will never be replaced with algorithms and reasonings. Algorithms and reasoning cannot comprehend her. This is a, a completely sensory, imperfect, human, organic experience. The body in the natural world, contrary to what religion often teaches us, should be experienced, integrated, rather than denied. The passionate and sensual approach to life is the sp first step towards enlightenment. Think of Siddhartha or St. Augustine. In readings, she signifies a period when we approach life through feelings and pleasure rather than thought. Trust your creative soul. Beauty, luxury, success, unrestrained passion, and the pleasure principle are all within her realm. She represents our desire to hold on to our mothers, to our motherland. It's this stubborn, emotional approach, the refusal to consider the facts, self-indulgence, laziness, and procrastination that can also be negative expressions of the Empress. The joy of life, fruitfulness, abundance, plenitude, but also excesses, overindulgence, consumerism, and waste can be tied to this archetype. There is a personal lesson that I derive from the Empress, and that is the lesson of Passion. Especially when you become a parent, you learn to be patient, tolerant. So whether you are a seasoned artist or a tarot enthusiast, exploring the visual language of the cards, let the Empress guide your brush or guide your soul, infusing your art with the timeless energy of creation. Embrace the journey my fellow creators, and let the Empress inspire your artistic odyssey. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one.